السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه اللهم لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما وأرنا الحق حقا ورزقنا اتباعه وأرنا الباطل باطلا ورزقنا اجتنابه واجعلنا مما يستمعون القول فيتبعون أحسنه وأدخلنا برحمتك في عبادك الصالحين Dear brothers and sisters in Islam, welcome to part 8 of our series, uh, The Diseases of the Heart. And inshallah today, in our very short limited time, uh, we want to talk about another disease of the heart. And when you look in the Quran, you see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned many stories. And usually these stories about, uh, are about His messengers and prophets. Right? May the uh, peace and blessings be upon them all. And from these stories, one of the things that we learn or that we get from them is we see that the prophets were human beings just like us. And they encountered similar difficulties. And one of those amazing stories that's mentioned in the Quran is the story of Musa and his people, Bani Israel. Now, of course, I'm not going to mention the whole story, but there's a part of the story that I want to mention that is related to uh, our disease today. If you recall when, by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Musa alayhi salam was able to take Bani Israel away from the shackles of Fir'aun and his people. And they were headed out of Egypt. They were headed out of Egypt. And Fir'aun and his people changed their mind and they started chasing them down. Right, and they're chasing them down with horses and, and cavalry, etc. And so now, Bani Israel, in front of them is the Red Sea. And behind them is, Bani Isra uh, is, is Fir'aun and his, his army. So many of them start losing hope. Right, they're stuck, there's no way out for them. Or they think there's no way out for them. So they say, Inna lamudrakun, we're done. Khalas, game over. Right? They forget about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Musa says, Kalla, inna ma'ya rabbi sayahdeen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with me, right? And he will, he will guide me. And of course, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to him to take his staff, hit the sea, and we all know the story. The sea split. Yeah, an amazing uh, 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 scenario. And of course, Allah saved Bani Israel and he drowned Fir'aun and his people. And now Bani Israel have been saved, right? And they're on the other side now. And so, right after they've been saved, they find a group of people worshipping some idols. They find a group of people worshipping some idols. So Allah Subh'anaHu Wa says, وَجَاوَزْنَا بِبَنِي إِسْرَائِيلَ الْبَحْرَ فَأَتَوْا عَلَىٰ قَوْمٍ يَعْكُفُونَ عَلَىٰ أَصْنَامٍ لَهُمْ قَالُوا يَا مُوسَ جَعَلْ لَنَا إِلَهًا كَمَا لَهُمْ آلِهَا They see these people worshipping this God, and they kind of like it. So they're like, oh Musa, Give us a God like them so we can worship. So, you know, it's, it's something amazing that they just saw this amazing miracle by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and already they are forgetting about Allah. Already they want to commit shirk, which is the biggest sin that a person can commit. And so Musa says to them, إِنَّكُمْ قَوْمٌ تَجْهَلُونَ You are ignorant people. You just saw this amazing miracle and now already you forgot about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals to Musa, that he has to go up to the mountain and meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so what does he do? He leaves his brother Harun in charge. Right? And so he goes up, right, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, 40 nights. Right? And, uh, and he speaks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's why he's called Kalimullah, Musa alayhi salam. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives him uh, rules. Right? Gives him uh, rules and gives him basically like sharia. Right? And he gives them the alwah. It's all written on the alwah. On the scriptures. And so while Musa is getting this wahi from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and speaking to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what's Bani Israel doing? One of them, uh, 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 by the name of a Samiri, which is mentioned in Surah Al Qasas, he says to them, Listen, let's get our, all our gold, you know, melt it and build like a calf, right? And start worshipping it, right? So they're like, Okay. Many of them said, Let's do it. And Harun tried to stop them, but they wouldn't listen and they even threatened to kill him. So now they start worshipping this calf. And now Musa is coming down. Musa is coming down from the mountain. 
with the alwah, with the revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is like bushra, which is a blessing, right? And he's happy, you know, he wants to show the people. And what does he see? He sees this mess. His people are worshipping a calf. His people are worshipping a calf, right? These are his people, he's responsible for them. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Musa غضبان أسفا ولما رجع موسى إلى قومه غضبان أسفا When Musa returned, this is in Surah Al-A'raf, when Musa returned to his people, غضبان أسفا, very angry and very displeased. قال بئس قال بئس ما خلفتموني من بعدي How evil is what you left after me? يعني what you started doing after me. أعجلتم أمر ربكم Right? And then he went to Harun. First, before he did that, he threw the alwah. Imagine now, alwah is like the Quran. From his anger, he threw the alwah. وَأَلْقَ الْأَلْوَاحِ Right? And then he went to Harun, his brother, and he grabbed them by his hair. Now imagine, like, just try to imagine that scenario. He threw the alwah on the ground. You know, imagine if someone in front of you threw the Quran. Right? How angry did they have to be to do that? Right? He threw the alwah. وَأَخَذَ بِرَأْسِ أَخِيهِ يَجُرُّهُ إِلَيْهِ He took the, the head of Harun from his hair and he dragged him to him. Right? And he wants answers from Harun. What happened? Right? Well, what, what, why, why are the people doing this? And so Harun is, he says, قَالَ uh, يَبْنَ O son of my mother. He's trying to use words that can calm him down. Right? قَالَ يَبْنَ أُمَّ إِنَّ الْقَوْمَ اسْتَضْعَفُونِي وَكَادُوا يَقْتُلُونَنِي The people they took advantage of me and they wouldn't listen to me and they even plotted to kill me. Right? And so then Musa kind of calmed down. And then he says, قَالَ رَبِّ اغْفِرْ لِي وَلِأَخِي وَأَدْخِلْنَا بِرَحْمَتِكُ وَأَنْتَ خَيْرُ وَأَنْتَ أَرْحَمُ الرَّحِمِينَ Then he calmed down and he asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive them. Right? So I wanted to start with this story because from this story we see many things. Number one thing is that we see that anger right, uh, happens to all of us. Right? Even the prophets. Right? And anger can get to a point when the person loses his, يعني, his intellect, right? He, he can't even think, يعني, to the point that Musa threw the alwah. This is wahi he just got from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he just threw it, right? And then he grabbed Harun from the hair, like imagine someone comes and grabs you from the hair and drags you. You know, that's a very aggressive uh, uh, manner, right? So inshallah today, in, in, in the very limited time we have, uh, we're going to want to talk about what is anger. What are some of the dangers and the consequences of anger? Uh, what are some of the causes, right? What, what gets people to become angry, right? Um, what are some of the signs and symptoms? And finally, and most importantly, is how do we deal with anger? How do we deal with anger? Uh, so what is anger, right? There are many definitions, right? I'll read you one definition that, that I found. Uh, they said anger is a natural, though sometimes unwanted or irrational emotion that everybody experiences from time to time, right? It's a natural thing, right? It's, it's, yeah, and if you find yourself getting angry, it's not unnatural. It's just how you, how you control that anger or how you use that anger. Because anger can be constructive and it can be uh, destructive. It can be uh, destructive, right? And so this is something that everybody experiences. And usually anger is triggered by an emotional hurt. Yeah, and usually a person becomes angry when he's emotionally hurt by something. Right? Or, or physically hurt, right? Usually they're, they're hurt by something, right? Anger is usually experienced as an unpleasant feeling that occurs when we think we have been injured, right? When we, ha we think we have been injured, somebody hurts you, maybe uh, 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 emotionally, says something about you and you get angry, right? And, and of course, yani this is something that happens every single day. Yani, uh, with, your, with your children, with your spouse, with your father, with your mother, with your co-workers, on the train, everywhere, right? People in the, in the prayer space, they come and you know, this person uh, took this one spot and this person did this and this person's phone rang and yeah, and this person got angry, it just happens all the time, right? So this is triggered, it's triggered uh, by uh, when someone's injured or mistreated, right? Someone's mistreated, uh, someone uh, treats you unfairly, you get angry. Right, you, you, are, you naturally get angry. Uh, uh, something opposes your views, right? So, مثلاً, you believe that Allah is one. And then you see people worshipping other than Allah, like a statue. You should get angry in, in, internally. 
right? Uh, so something that opposes your views, or, uh, or when we are faced with obstacle, obstacles that keep us away from our goals. For example, you have a goal you want to achieve. Yeah, you want to you wanna, uh, uh, get a bachelor's degree, for example. And you know, you're having difficulty, so you get frustrated with yourself, right? You get angry with yourself, right? Something that kind of keeps you away from achieving your goals. Or maybe you have a goal of starting a business, and you're finding it very difficult to do, and so you get very frustrated with yourself. Right? And as we said, ang anger is, uh, can be uh, uh, constructive and destructive, right? There are times where we should be angry. Like uh, in the, uh, in, uh, with the story of Musa, right? He had reason to be angry. You know, he had just, you know, uh, uh, by the will of Allah, saved his people. You know, he taught them about Tawheed and about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he went all the way up 40 days. Just imagine, you go 40 days trip, yeah? And then you come back and you see people, يعني, they let you down, right? They're doing shirk. So he had the utmost reason to, to be angry, right? And so, uh, uh, يعني, there's times to be angry, right? You see, uh, uh, you see your, مثلاً, one of your family members, your children, uh, does something very, uh, uh, very wrong, right? You should be angry, right? You should be angry, but uh, of course you should control that. Uh, uh, Aristotle, he said, uh, the Greek philosopher, he said, the man who is angry at the right things and with the right people and further as he ought when he ought and as long as he ought is praised. Yeah, and he basically he's saying that uh, <laughs> in English, right? It's, it's praiseworthy to be angry, you know, in the right time with the right people, right? It's something praiseworthy when you're angry at the right time, right? And even the Prophet ﷺ would get angry, right? Uh, one time he saw two people arguing about a, a verse in the Quran. And so the Sahaba said his face was so red it looked like a pomegranate. You know, pomegranate is so red. They said from the anger his face was like a pomegranate. طيب, now, what are some of the dangers and the consequences of anger, right? And you, Subhanallah, you'll, if you think about, you know, uh, they say that uh, uh, every person, you know, faces or gets angry at least once a day. And if you haven't got angry today, mashallah, tabarakallah, that's good for you. But most likely you did. Somehow, either by yourself, maybe you, you're disappointed with yourself, you missed salah or that something happened, or with somebody else, another person. Right? And you see that when, when a person gets frustrated and angry, right, it can lead to many other evil things. Right? Uh, from, from, from the simplest things, you know, a person might, might swear or say something that does not please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A person might, uh, you know, break something, you know, hit the wall, right? I know uh, one person, I, w I went to his house, and there's holes everywhere, right? Well, well, what happened? Every time he gets angry, he punches the wall, right? Skinny has uh, anger, anger problems, right? Uh, fighting happens. People physically fight, right? Uh, uh, when, when they get angry, they forget about everything. Uh, injuries, when people fight, they, they hurt each other, right? Death, a lot of, I mean, SubhanAllah, one of the ulama, he said that when uh, he went to uh, the prisons, right, uh, where the death row is, people who are about to be sentenced to death, right, and he asked the one in charge, he said, what is the most common thing amongst these uh, people who are about to be executed? He said, yani most of them, they, they did something out of anger. They were angry and they did something that they later regretted. And look, yani something that ruined their life, right, yani khalas, their life is going to end. You know, just because of they couldn't control their anger, right? And how many people, how many couples are divorced because of anger, right? Every single divorce happens when someone's angry. Have you ever heard of a divorce where people are, yani, yani a person sitting with his, with his wife having tea and, and then he tells her, you know, I would like to divorce you. That never happens, right? Usually they're angry at each other and he's just like, you know, you're divorced. Uh, just a few weeks ago I was reading uh, on Facebook. I don't know if this is true or not, but I think yani, the, the journal is trustworthy. Uh, a person, this man, I'm not going to name the country, uh, uh, he, he divorced his wife for something very, very silly. What happened? They just came back from the market. I don't know what happened in the market. <laughs> something bad probably happened. Maybe she bought too many things. And then, uh, <laughs> and then uh, he told her, like they have a kid, he told her, yani, get the, uh, close the door. The door was open. Uh, uh, he told her close the door and so she was busy like with stuff and she's like okay okay and then he still closed her he told her like four or five times and then she wouldn't close it and then he says you're divorced right? just cause closing a door <laughs> something so 
so silly, right? Uh, it led to, uh, and his anger led to something like that. And of course, uh, 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 anger can also hurt person, uh, hurt a person uh, uh, psychologically and and uh, physiologically, right? If you look at your health, right? They say when uh, uh, when the person is angry, two hormones are released, right? The same hormones that are released when you're stressed, right? Adrenaline and cortisol, and these are the hormones that are released when someone is stressed, right? And so it can have a very negative effect on the person, the person who's always angry, right? Uh, and so you know you see people with with uh, anger problems, they have uh, blood pressure problems, yeah, and they have diabetes and all these things. Uh, because their body is always on this, uh, as they call it in psychology, you know, f uh, fight or flight yeah, uh, reaction, right? The body is like getting itself ready to do something, even like run, either run away or do something, right? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put this uh, uh, naturally in us for protection, right? Anger protects us from, from dangers and other things, but if not controlled and used properly, it can become uh, negative and shaitan takes advantage of that. Shaitan takes advantage of, of, of the son of Adam uh, uh, in that time and he gets him to do some crazy things, right? Uh, some of the health problems, right? Uh, high blood pressure, uh, people get strokes, sleep problems, uh, digestive problems, uh, uh, immune pro uh, system problems, right? Many of them. Uh, psychologically, they can get depression. Person's always angry. They're never smiling, right? Some people, like, they never smile, right? They're always angry. Allah alam what's happening with them, but they're always angry. Uh, you know, eating disorders, substance abuse, etc. Self, people hurting uh, their own selves, self's injury. Right, so many problems can come from, from being angry. Now let's look at the causes, right? And I want to talk about first spiritually and kind of like the environment. Because a person, yeah, and he, maybe he can't control his anger because of other diseases in his heart or other issues, right, uh, that cause him to not be able to control it. And other things are his environment and, and other causes, right, we'll talk about them. Al Imam Al Ghazali, rahimahullah, he says that the causes w uh, which cause anger to grow, right, and he names them, he says, self conceit, self praise, right, argument, too much greed for too much wealth, and name and fame, right. So basically, he's saying, yani, a person who is kind of full of himself, right? We talked about it last week. Person, uh, one of the reasons people are arrogant is because they have this mentality that they are better than people, right? And they have they're kind of full of themselves, and they have this narcissistic uh, uh, attitude and belief about themselves, and so they have this belief that you know they're better than people, and they're kind of full of themselves, and you know their uh, uh, people should respect them all the time, right? And so a person like that when so he's insulted, or it seems like he's insulted, or there's even a chance that he might be insulted, what happens? He's gonna get angry, right? Blood pressure goes up, you know, uh, he's like red, and he's angry. Um, right? Uh, too much greed, right? Uh, a lot of times people get angry, right? They have this ghadab, because of worldly things, right? Uh, uh, somebody, uh, um, you know, you fight over something very, yeah, and very useless. Um, you know, uh, one time a person came to the Prophet ﷺ uh, carrying a person who's chained. And so the Prophet ﷺ said, what's this? He said, this person killed my brother. And so the Prophet ﷺ asked the chained person, he said, did you kill his brother? He said, yes. And so the Prophet ﷺ got angry, he said, why would you kill him? Why would you kill him? And you'd be expecting some, like, some really good reason. You know, he, uh, he killed my brother, so I killed him. And, he said, why did you kill him? He said, we were out hunting together. And, and just from that statement, you see that they knew each other. And, either, and possibly they were friends. They went hunting each other, and then something happened, and one of them said, uh, yeah, and he kind of cursed the other one, and then he cursed the other one, and then he cursed, said something more offensive, and then he took his axe and he killed him. Right? And so, yeah, and you see that it, 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 it uh, uh, because of something, yeah, he, dunya, we, something of this, of this worldly life, like yani just honor and things like that, uh, uh, he, he killed his, his brother. Uh, and, and Imam Ghazali says, if these evils are united in a person, then you will see the worst character from this person. Yani when you see these things in a person, you will see that he can't control his anger. You can't reason with a person like that. Right? And so he says, these things can be removed by their opposites. Right? And so self-praise, when a person is kind of always full of himself, 
you can uh, take care of that by being modest, right? Uh, if you hear someone, if something is said about you, right, you kind of calm yourself down and you have some modesty and you, you, and you, you don't get angry. And then he said, pride is, is to be removed by one's own origin and birth. And we talked about this, when a person thinks too much of himself, and he just has to remember where he came from and where he's going to end up, right? Uh, and number three, greed is to be removed by remaining satisfied with necessary things. And when someone is greedy, right, sometimes because of a worldly thing, uh, yeah, and he, whatever it is, you, you have, uh, for example, you have a phone and your child is playing with it, your three-year-old uh, child, and then he drops it. And then what happens when an iPhone drops? Shatters, <laughs> right? The screen breaks, and then the father gets, you know, really angry, or the mother or whatever, right? Something dunyawi, uh, he might get angry and maybe hit his child, or say something really bad, right? Uh, and some cultures, like, they're so bad, like when they're angry, they'll curse their own selves, <laughs> especially like in the Arab culture. When a person's angry, like sometimes they curse their own selves, yeah? Um, so so uh, just to be content, يعني, knowing that this is the khadr of Allah, خلاص, the phone broke. يعني, just how Allah gave you one, He can give you another one. So يعني, it's just a phone, chill out. يعني, your, phone, your, your son is more important than the phone. Uh, and then he said, miserliness by charity. And someone who's kind of bakhil, sometimes uh, that can cause a person to be angry. Uh, just to do charity, it will help him get rid of that. Now what are some of the common uh, triggers? Yeah, there are things that trigger people to be angry, right? Uh, these can be kind of environmental, right? So let's talk about some of them. Uh, one of them could be grief and sadness, or yani, someone dies in the family, right? It can cause someone to be angry. Of course, now, uh, and the believer, uh, from his iman, right, he should, of course, uh, be content with what Allah, whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose for him, right? So a death of a, of a relative uh, uh, is, of course, difficult, but uh, 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 this is the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the person should be content with the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't mean he can't be sad uh, etc this is natural but to be angry over that right that is that is not uh, the the behavior of the of the believer right uh, rudeness right uh, or when you when you speak with people sometimes they're rude to you right so that can cause a person to be angry um, uh, someone be, uh, being tired right and and hungry Right, like many of you here are fasting today, you know, today probably was a tougher day than, than any other days, right? Because when a person is hungry, and that's why subhanAllah in Ramadan, you see a lot of people, they're more angry, right? In Ramadan, they're more angry, the time where they're supposed to kind of uh, control themselves. Uh, of course, that's the test, yani, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a person, because he doesn't have the food, he doesn't have the basic needs, uh, he becomes angry, right? And so the person needs to try to control himself. Uh, and and uh, you know they're 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 hungry and they're angry, so you know they're they're hangry as they say, right? He's hungry and he's angry. And then uh, uh, another reason can be injustice. Somebody uh, wrongs you, right? Somebody wrongs you. You're driving. And Subhanallah, uh, driving is kind of the best test for your character. And if you want to test your character, just go driving. Uh, Calgary is not so bad. Maybe go on Deerfoot or something, and you'll see Subhanallah like people cut you off and all these things. If you go to like some other countries, yeah, you go drive in, in Saudi Arabia or something, right? You're really going to need a lot of patience. People just cut you off, people just speeding everywhere, coming one way sometimes, right? So you have to have a lot of patience, right? So sometimes you're, you're wronged, right? But you have to be, you have to be patient. Uh, sexual frustration, right? And this is uh, one of the causes of, of many issues between couples. Uh, uh, the, one of the, the, the couples, right? Uh, the husband or the wife, they're not getting uh, the, what they need, right? And so even the Prophet ﷺ warned against this. He said that when a, when a husband goes to his wife for, for intimacy, right? And the wife rejects him, and then the, per, uh, that, 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 uh, uh, the husband goes to sleep angry, then the angels curse that woman until the morning. Right? So it's a very serious matter, right? And of course, the same for the woman. Yani the woman also has needs, right? And so, when, when, uh, uh, this is also something that can cause frustration and anger. Right? Because this is something that is naturally a need uh, for human beings. Uh, money problems, debt, you know, everybody has, yani these, these are very common issues. And they can cause people to be very frustrated with their situation. Um, yani there's many reasons that we can mention just because of time. We'll skip uh, the rest of them. Now, let's look at some of the signs and symptoms. Right, some of the signs and symptoms. Uh, 
you know, it's not that hard to know if someone's angry. But subhanAllah, sometimes people can actually can hold it, can hold their anger and maybe release it after, right? And it can be actually dangerous when, when, a, when a person holds their anger and doesn't release it positively. It can kind of kind of build up and then it's a volcano <laughs> and some other day, right? A small yani, a small uh, uh, burst of anger is better than one big volcano, <laughs> right? That can be very dangerous. Uh, so what are some of the, the signs and symptoms? Uh, name calling, right? You see some people, yani, uh, they get in an argument, they start calling each other names, right? And you can kind of the most common example is like siblings, uh, husband and wife, right? Uh, they get angry and then they just insult somebody, right? Or somebody's upset with something and they just insult them. You're watching the news and you see like a, a, a president of a country doing something wrong and you're like, you know, beep, beep, you're just like cursing that, that, uh, that person, right? Um, number two, criticizing, belittling, like these are all, all signs, right? Uh, of course, we said these are uh, the signs of an arrogant person. He belittles people, he criticizes them, uh, 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 he puts them down. This is uh, one of the, uh, part of the definition of, of arrogance, right? Um, lack of patience, right? That could be a person like is always agitated. Yeah, and he, uh, you tell him something and he's just always like kind of reacting negatively. Uh, blaming everyone, right? This is also a sign that the person yeah, and he has kind of anger issues. Um, people avoiding you, right? Many people avoid other people because خلاص, yeah, they can't even have a conversation with them. Whenever you talk to them, they get angry, they get upset. Right? There's some people, yeah, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us, uh, you, whatever happens, it upsets them. Whatever happens, they're angry. Right? Uh, and of course, yeah, and he, when we're talking about these things, is the first people we think about is our relatives because they're the most important. And they're awla, they're the most, uh, uh, they're the priority, right? And sometimes they're the toughest to deal with. They're the toughest to deal with. So now how do we deal with anger? Before Maghrib comes in, I think we have 15 minutes. So how do we deal with anger? So Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu, he said that a man came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam and he says, Awsini. He came to the Prophet and he said, advise me, Awsini. So the Prophet said, La taghdab. He said to him, don't be angry. So the man took it, he said, okay. Awsini. Yani give me another advice. He says, La taghdab. The man, yani obviously he's looking for something else. He said, again, Awsini. Yani give me an advice, O, o Messenger of Allah. And the Prophet again said to him, La taghdab. Right? And so from this hadith, we see that uh, uh, when, uh, whenever the Prophet mentions something three times in a row, it shows importance. Right? It shows importance uh, that controlling your anger is something, yani, obviously not something easy to do. Right? And that's why the Prophet ﷺ mentioned it many times, and it's something very, very praiseworthy. Very praiseworthy. Now why would someone want to control his anger? Right? And what's, why should you do that? What's the incentive to do that? Why can't you just like let it all out? And break things, yell at people, insult them. Well, why can't you just do that? Right? There's many, many, many incentives. Right? We'll mention some of them. Number one is that there's great reward with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the person who controls himself. It was narrated uh, uh, from Ibn Umar uh, that the Prophet ﷺ said that ما من جرعة أعظم أجرا عند الله من جرعة غيظ كظمها عبد ابتغاء وجه الله There is no gulp or يعني, kind of restraint that brings greater reward with Allah than a gulp of anger that a man swallows and he suppresses. And he has, he's angry and he kind of swallows that anger. He holds it back seeking thereby the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? Yani there's great reward in it. When a person is angry and he's able to do something and he holds it back. So there's great reward with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number two, it's a protection from the punishment of the Day of, Daj on the day of, day of Judgment. Uh, uh, the Prophet ﷺ, he said in another hadith, مَنْ كَفَّ غَضَبَهُ كَفَّ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ عَذَابَهُ If one restrained his anger, Allah will keep punishment from him on the Day of Judgment. Yeah, and it's a protection from him on the Day of Judgment. Also, number three, in terms of uh, when it comes to argumentation, right? Uh, and this is yeah, a big, big problem amongst people, right? They get, uh, they get in an argument and then it gets heated up. People get angry and the raises are, uh, voices are raised and, and, and gets, it can even get physical. 
So the Prophet وسلم, يعني, and Allah, uh, the Prophet وسلم said that أبغض الرجال إلى الله الألد الخصم that the most hated, the most despicable person in the, in, in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the ruthless argumentative person. The person who's just like, wants to argue all the time. Even though he's wrong, he just wants to keep arguing, arguing, arguing. Right, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and, the, when, and, and Allah mentions as a characteristic of hypocrites. Yeah, The person who's always argumentative. And that's why the Prophet ﷺ gave a huge incentive for whoever leaves argumentation. Even though he's right. And this is the key. There's a huge reward for the person who leaves an argument even though he's right. So this is يعني, one of those hadiths you want to like kind of put on, on your refrigerator, right? The Prophet ﷺ says, I guarantee a house in the highest place in Jannah. I guarantee a house in the highest place of Jannah for a man who avoids argumentation even if he was right. Yani this is a very amazing reward. A house in the highest place of Jannah for the person who yani leaves the argument even though he's right. Because sometimes you know we're arguing with somebody, you're having an argumentation with somebody and you don't want to let it go because you're right. Even though you're right, if the other person is not letting go, be the better person and let it go. And just remember that there's a huge reward waiting for you, bi-idhnillah. Uh, number four, you will be from the muttaqin, right? In Surah Ali Imran, a very famous ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَسَارِعُوا إِلَىٰ مَغْفِرَةٍ yeah? وَسَارِعُوا إِلَىٰ مَغْفِرَةٍ مِّن رَبِّكُمْ وَجَنَّةٍ عَرْضُهَا السَّمَاوَاتِ عَرْضُهَا السَّمَاوَاتُ وَالْأَرْضُ عُدَّتْ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, yani, and hasten and race for forgiveness from your Lord, وَجَنَّةٍ عَرْضُهَا السَّمَاوَاتُ وَالْأَرْضِ And a, and, and a jannah that يعني, it's big as the, as, the, as, as the width of the heavens and the earth. Yeah, and the earth. يعني, huge jannah, right? Who is this for? أُعِدَّتْ للمتقين. This is only prepared for a specific type of people. Who are they? المتقين. This is only for المتقين. Who are المتقين? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explains in the next verses. Uh, who are المتقين? الَّذِينَ يُفِقُونَ فِي السَّرَّاءِ وَالضَّرَّاءِ so number one characteristic is they are people who spend for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in ease and in hardship. Yani when they're doing very well financially, they spend in the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when they're also uh, having some trouble financially, they still spend in this, uh, uh, for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? Al Kadam Al Ghayd here is basically the most intense type of anger. And Al Kadam is when you hold it. So, and those who hold yani, that really intense anger, this is one of the characteristics of the Muttaqeen. Those who are promised that Jannah is when they're angry, that, that really tough anger, that very kind of aggressive anger, they hold it in. They hold it in. Wal Kadimin Al Ghayd. وَالْعَافِينَ عَنِ النَّاسِ And those who pardon people. وَاللَّهُ يُحِبُّ الْمُحْسِنِينَ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves the muhsinin. Now when we talk about, why would someone hold their anger? Right? Why would someone hold their anger? There's only three reasons and no fourth. Number one reason why someone would hold their anger is because of their weakness. Yeah? A person is in front of uh, a king and uh, the king insults him. Yeah, and he's not going to get angry back at him unless he wants to be punished or killed or whatever, right? Or sometimes, you know, uh, your boss insults you or something happened. Yeah, and he usually, you, just because of your, your, your position, you're just going to be quiet. Or sometimes your father says something uh, and then, yeah, and you know he's wrong, but just because and he's the father and you're the son, just be quiet yeah, and you keep your mouth closed. So number one, because of his weakness, right? And of course, this person can never pardon because he never for, forgave, and he never held any anger yani for, uh, for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the first person, because of his weakness, it has nothing to do for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? Because the condition is that you hold the anger for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's the condition. The second reason is he's able to hold his anger, yani he's able, sorry, he's able to do something about it. Right? Because the first person, yani he's not able to kind of take revenge because of his weakness. 
The second person, he's able to take revenge or take action, but because of someone, uh, uh, yani someone there, he doesn't do it. Yani because he's afraid of somebody else or because out of respect for somebody else, yani his intention is because of somebody else. Right? Sometimes, for example, uh, 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 your, your brother you know, insults you or hits you, yani your relative, your sibling, and, and then you, you're about to do something about it, then you see your father in the corner of your eye, and then you remember the punishment you're going to get, and so you, you, you hold back. Right? So you're not doing it for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you're doing it because of another person. The third person is when you do it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is the one that we should all strive for. Right? And only that person can follow up with وَالْعَافِينَ عَنِ النَّاسِ can, can follow up with forgiveness. Because only when you do it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the only reason you would forgive someone is because you did it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You, you held your anger and, and for, for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, yani, uh, hoping for his reward. And then after that, when a yani, person gets to, this, to the next level, he just pardons the person. Yeah, and you just imagine yeah, and somebody wrongs you uh, and then you just you, you hold your anger and then you pardon him right um, there's a story of Zain al-Abidin right uh, rahimahullah uh, who's yeah, and from, from, the, uh, from the kind of the relative of, of Ali radiallahu anhu I think his grand 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 grandchild uh, third or fourth uh, so it, it said that one time he had a, a, a servant right uh, and uh, he was sitting down and she was about to serve him something and she kind of tripped and it fell on his head or a part of his body and it started bleeding right so now he's the owner yani he owns her kind of right she's under him uh, so he's he's about to get angry so this this woman is very smart she recites the verse to him well call the mean right she recites the, the the verse that I just said to you to 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 Zain al-Abidin. So she says, وَالْكَاظِمِينَ الْغَيْضِ And the ones, she's reminding him, and the ones who uh, hold their anger. And so he says, كَظَمْتُ غَيْضِ يعني, I help, I'm holding my anger. Right? And then she says, وَالْعَافِينَ عَنِ النَّاسِ Right? She reminds him uh, to, to forgive people. <coughs> and so he says, I forgive you. Right? And then she says, وَاللَّهُ يُحِبُّ الْمُحْسِنِينَ And Allah loves those who, who strive for excellence. And so then he looks at her and says, you're freed. He just frees her. And imagine from, from, from that anger, from that ghadab, right? He held it, he forgave her, and then he freed her. And that's a big deal when you free a slave. And that's a big deal. Right? And, and, and you would never do this unless you were hoping and you were certain in the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Unless you were certain in the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So now let's, let's look at how we can uh, kind of some techniques that we can use quickly. I think we have about five minutes. The Prophet Sallallahu he says in, a, in an authentic hadith that لَيْسَ الشَّدِيدُ بِالسُّرْعَةِ لَيْسَ الشَّدِيدُ بِالسُّرْعَةِ إِنَّمَا الشَّدِيدُ الَّذِي يَمْلِكُ نَفْسَهُ عِنْدَ الْغَضَبِ That the strong person is not the one who, who's, يعني, who's a strong wrestler or who has strength, يعني, physical strength. That's not the, the strong person. The strong person is the one who can control himself when he's angry. That mental strength, that's the real strong person. That when, when something angers you, something, uh, uh, you know, somebody insults you, somebody wrongs you, you hold your anger, that shows strength, right? That shows strength, uh, uh, that's what the Prophet ﷺ says. There's a story of, of a person by uh, the name of Al-Ahnaf ibn Al-Qais, and it was said that this man had like the most control of his anger, like he was so patient. Like he, they said like you would never see him angry, right? And they would ask him like, you know, how, how did you do that? How would you do that? They, he said that, you know, I get angry just like you get angry. Yeah, and he, same problems, I have a wife, you have children, I have children, same thing. I deal with problems, but he says, I do my best to hold it in. Yeah, and he, I, I try to, as my best is always focus on holding it in, right? So these people, some people were kind of uh, envious of him or jealous of him and they wanted him to kind of you know, lose it, right? So they found this kind of person who looked like he needed some money. <laughs> so they called him over and they said, listen, you know Al-Ahnaf ibn Qais? He said, yeah. He said, we'll give you a thousand dinars, which is a lot of money, if you go over there and give him a big slap on the face. 
right? He said, that's it, that's it. So he goes over and he's looking for Al-Ahnaf al Mukhais, right? And he's sitting down, right, on the floor, just like you're sitting right now. And he's probably like reading a book. And then he sees kind of the shadow of somebody, right? And so he kind of, kind of like, his face goes up. And then this man just, yeah, and he gives him this big slap, right? His face turning the other way. And Al-Ahnaf holds it all in. Just imagine, like, Someone just give you this big slap for no reason and he holds it yeah, and in. And so then he looks at this person and he says, why did you do that? Right? He, he's honest, he's like people, they, they, they offered me a thousand dinars and, <laughs> and I just did it. Right? So he said, you know what? You're not getting your thousand dinars because I'm not Al-Ahnaf. Right? He, now he wants to get back at him. He's like, I'm not Al-Ahnaf. He says, that person over there is Al-Ahnaf. And, and he pointed to a person who had the worst temper ever, right? Uh, they, they say this person, yeah, and he just like if a fly goes by him, yeah, and his his blood pressure goes up. So <laughs> he says that's the person you, you, yeah, and he, you, you you're gonna get your money for, right? So he goes to him, and and they said that this person is always sitting there with his sword, right? So you know just as he gets close to him, but to slap him, this guy takes the sword and cuts his hand off, <laughs> and he got what he deserved, right? And uh, you see here that uh, yani controlling your anger, right? Uh, it comes with practice. Yeah, the Prophet says, "Inna al-hilm wa tahallum," right? That you know the opposite, right, of it to be calm and, and, and controlling of yourself is by practicing that, right? So it's something that you can practice. Uh, uh, just we'll end with these three things. Three things that the Prophet recommended to do when a person is angry. Number one is al istiada. The Prophet saw two people fighting and being very angry. And he said, I, I, I'll tell you one word that if he said it, it would relieve him of his anger. A'udhu billahi min shaitan rajeem. That's one thing. The second thing the Prophet ﷺ recommended is that if you're angry, change your position. So if you're standing, sit down. And if you're sitting down, then lie back. And that should take care of your anger. And last thing is, make wudu. Right? <coughs> make wudu. If you're angry, right, nothing is working, go to the washroom, make wudu, and you'll see how that will relieve you of your anger and we'll end there inshallah just because of Baghrab Adan Subhanakallah wa bihamdik Nashadu Allah ilayant nastaghfiraka wa natubu alayk wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa